Hey friends, I appreciate you checking out United Dry Needling's YouTube channel. If you've been a previous student of mine or if you've been a student of another dry needling company, uh, I still appreciate you hanging out with us. I hope you've enjoyed the content that we have uploaded, uh, all the demonstration videos, and then we'll add some special videos just as I can turn them out. So today we're gonna to talk about dry needling for scar management. Specifically, we'll talk a little bit about the types of scars that you may see, how we can add dry needling uh, to a treatment that may uh, have some benefit to scars. We'll talk about what the mechanism is, uh, what the specific technique is. Uh, I'll show you some video examples of uh, a couple cool scars. One is a uh, cubital tunnel scar, cubital tunnel release scar. Show you one after a, uh, what looks like a total knee scar, but it's actually a uh, patellar tendon, patellar tendon uh, repair. And then I'm gonna show you a C-section scar that we, we've done in a couple of the classes. I just added this to United Dry Needlands uh, course series a couple weekends ago. So a couple weekends ago was our first lab for scar management. So if you have been to a course before August of 2021, you have not seen this. So uh, I hope you enjoy the video content and uh, maybe it'll be a good little addition to your practice. We'll also uh, talk about uh, how you maybe could practice this on yourself before you try to do it on a real life patient. So I'll show you a little demo that you may could use for yourself. And then talk a little bit about needle types. Needle types are very important, especially when you're gonna do uh, the type of manipulation that you will need to do for a scar. So we'll talk about that as well. Uh, as always, I appreciate you liking the video and also appreciate you subscribing to the channel. That'll help keep the content free. Uh, the more subscribers, the merrier. So again, thanks for hanging out with us and I hope you enjoy the video. The lawyers make me tell you this at the start of every video, but I'm not gonna use my redneck robot voice that I've been using for all the demonstration videos, but I still gotta read it to you. So this demonstration is intended as a resource for previous students and licensed clinicians who can perform dry needling in their practice acting jurisdiction. But here's the kicker. Please do not attempt dry needling without proper licensure and training. Don't watch this video and go find some needles on eBay and stab your friends unless you're a licensed clinician with proper training. Okay, thanks. All right, so let's just jump right into this. We're gonna talk a little bit about uh, some of the mechanism, but before we talk about the mechanism, we need to just talk about scars in general. So wound healing is a complex process. It generally has four stages to it. So hemostasis, inflammation, proliferation, and remodeling are some of the four stages as you see. So just normal, simple scarring, that is a natural part of wound healing. However, if that wound healing process uh, gets altered, then more significant scarring can develop, and then you develop some of the issues that are associated with problematic scarring. You could have pain, you could have hypersensitivity, you could have desensitivity, you could have pruritus, which is just itching of the scar area. Uh, if a scar passes a joint or is in a certain area of the body, you could certainly have some range of motion restrictions. Uh, and then, of course, you could have some, some psychosocial components as well, such as embarrassment, uh, depending on where your scar is, where it's located. Uh, certainly in the, in the pelvic floor realm, uh, scars can, can be an issue with dyspareunia, uh, especially if we're talking about episiotomy scar. Uh, our C-section scar can even refer pain into the pelvic floor, so uh, it can, and you know, that can develop problems with uh, intercourse and with, uh, you know, sexual stuff that, that we need to address as, as pelvic floor physical therapists as well. So when we talk about types of scars, uh, we'll talk about specifically first about contractures. So often uh, that happens after a burn. A contracture scar causes the skin to tighten or contract, which is why it's called a contracture scar. They can make it difficult to move, especially if that scar crosses a joint or crosses uh, some muscles across a joint, or if it affects the nerves that, that affect the uh, area of the extremity as well. You can also have an atrophic scar, uh, one you may not have thought about before, but that's an indented scar. It heals below the normal layer of skin tissue. Atrophic scars form when the skin is unable to regenerate tissue, or if you have a big chunk of tissue that's been removed. Uh, as a result, it leaves behind this imbalanced scarring or can leave behind a divot. Uh, you could also have a flat scar. Uh, so that may be raised at first, but generally that type of scar flattens out as it heals. Flat scars are often uh, pink or red. Over time, they may become slightly lighter, slightly darker, just depending on your skin color. Uh, also, we could talk about keloid scars. So those scars are raised above the skin surface and it spreads beyond the wounded area. The overgrown scar tissue, it can get large, it can affect movement, it can become very painful. It can also, uh, again, have a little bit of that psychosocial component as well when you're embarrassed about the, the size of the keloid. So a hypertrophic scar is similar to a keloid. You can feel a hypertrophic scar when you run your finger over it. Uh, those raised scars may get smaller over time, but they typically never completely flatten all the way out. However, unlike a keloid, kind of the main difference here between a keloid and a hypertrophic scar is the keloids, uh, I'm sorry, the hypertrophic scars don't grow or spread beyond the wounded area, whereas a keloid, it's gonna grow, it's gonna spread, it's gonna get bigger, and it will expand beyond the area of the wound. And then, uh, certainly, almost all of us can talk a little bit about stretch marks, especially if you've had a kid, 
or if you're going from uh, small to bigger, or if uh, you get super swole in the weight room. Yeah, not happening. Uh, but a stretch mark, when the skin expands or it shrinks quickly, the connective tissue under the skin can be damaged. Stretch marks, again, often occur during pregnancy, puberty, after you gain a lot of weight, after you lose a lot of weight. They can appear on the breast, the stomach, the thighs, the upper arms. Uh, most people have seen stretch marks in their, in their life. So talking a little bit more about the mechanism. So there's some biomechanical, chemical, and vascular effects when you poke a needle inside an area. And we talked about those during course one of your dry needling training, if you were trained by United Dry Needling. However, there's multiple mechanotransducive processes that occur during needle manipulation, which can also affect scar tissue. So needle grasp results when collagen fibers and other tissues wind around the rotating needle. Uh, if you see on our YouTube channel, we have uh, some of the five most common dry needling techniques. One of them is needle tinting, which involves spinning the needle to wind the collagen around the needle. So you can check out that video if you want to see how that works. Uh, that's kind of the technique that we're going to use when we talk about dry needling for scar management. So in 2007, there was a study by uh, Len Gevin et al. I have no idea if I pronounced that correctly. Uh, where they looked at needle rotation or spinning of the needle. It caused winding and gathering of collagen around the needle. So just quoting a little bit of stuff from this article, within minutes, the pulling of collagen towards the needle induced an active cellular response in connective tissue fibroblasts up to several centimeters away from the needle. So that's kind of cool, spin a needle in this area and then several centimeters away, the uh, fibroblastic area or fibroblast excitement can happen. The cellular response consisted of an active cytoskeletal reorganization involving cell spreading that was measurable as an increase in mean fibroblast cell body cross-sectional area. Mechanical stimulation of fibroblast during needle manipulation has important extensive and lasting effects, effects on connective tissue. Again, I'm just quoting from that Langevin article. So the tissues experience a significant deformation during that process and it induces a remodeling effect by some fibroblastic activity. That mechanotransductive mechano, uh, mechanism is driven by tissue deformation through needle manipulation, and this me can mechanically stimulate fibroblasts for therapeutic benefits. Uh, Rosenfeld et al. in 2020 developed a protocol based upon the acupuncture technique of surrounding the dragon. So let's have a look at what surrounding the dragon looks like. Yeah, that's a lot of freaking needles. Um, yeah, that's a lot of freaking needles specifically for their protocol. Uh, they did needles that were 15 to 30 millimeters. They should be placed along the entire scar, spaced uh, 0.5 to 1.0 centimeters from each other. Those needles should be inserted at a distance of 0.5 to 1 centimeter from the scar, angled at 30 to 45 degrees toward the scar. The retention time should be around 20 minutes. Needle twisting may be added depending on the patient's sensitivity. And then Rosenfeld uh, suggested the treatment should be performed once or twice a week until resolution or if symptom plateau is achieved. So let's talk a little bit about needle type, uh, kind of the needle that I would recommend to use for this type of manipulation that you're gonna need to uh, deal with scar management. Uh, my favorite needle to, to use for this type, and actually for all types of dry needle, I'm all about this myotech life, uh, but myotech uh, has a regular, and then they have a 2.0. Uh, 2.0 is freaking cool. The difference between your typical uh, Click needle or typical needle with glue is your uh, needle is held into the guide tube by some type of glue or some type of little uh, melting or uh, a little divot that kind of holds it in place. And then when you, you have to click it to break it and then boop, the needle would just fall out, right? So with the Myotech 2.0, it's just a little bit different now. So the needle is held in place by some dimples. Uh, well, you can see that, but there's no glue holding it in place. So you don't have to break anything. So you can take this to the skin and then you just boop, you just tap it in. You don't have to, you don't have to break it. You don't have to pull a tab. So if you need to needle upside down, you can totally needle upside down and you can just tap it and it'll go in. If you need to needle sideways, you don't have to worry about the needle falling out of the end of your guide tube. Uh, this works well for, for scar management just because of the random positions you're gonna be in. So uh, you literally just put this on the skin and then you would just tap it in and that's all you have to do. I'm gonna pull this out real quick though because I want us to look at the handle and the reason why I like the Myotech Dry Needle for scar management. Uh, just look at the handle. It's a big old handle, which is important if you're going to do uh, stuff like needle manipulation, if you're gonna do such as like spinning and tinting. And when we're working for scar management, we're, we're spinning the needle. And I promise you, that is much easier to do when you have a large handle to grab. Uh, also, as you should always be needling, uh, following the recommendations of the standards of disease control and prevention, 
that is using alcohol and that is also using gloves. So you shouldn't be needling without gloves in the first place. But if you try to spin a needle with a small handle, when you have on a pair of gloves, your freaking gloves just get tangled up in it and it's super aggravating. So a bigger handle such as the Myotech, uh, the 2.0 or the Myotech regulars are definitely the way to go when uh, we're looking at scar management because you can, you can spin, you can manipulate, push in and out uh, with your gloves on, it's not that big of a deal. So here's a nice example of a patient with a cubital tunnel release and a scar on the medial aspect of her elbow after that surgery. This surgery was about uh, two or three years ago and she still had a good bit of scar tissue uh, and she was still actually having a little bit of pain and hypersensitivity in this area as well. So we insert our needle about uh, a half a centimeter away from the scar and then a pretty superficial technique, we're gonna take that 30 millimeter myotech needle and just kind of slide it directly behind uh, the backside of the scar. Uh, just kind of in varying positions of the scar. I was, I should have stabilized the skin rest here, right here and that would have let that needle go in a little bit easier but I was kind of trying to stay out of the way of the camera. So just tap the needle in, superficial technique. I did stabilize the skin there, so the needle slides directly underneath that scar a little bit better. And now the fun starts. So a little collagen winding. I'd like to say it was gentle, but if there was volume attached to this video, you would have heard uh, that sweet student scream. <laughs> I think she said she felt like her soul was leaving her body at that very moment, because uh, that was the most sensitive area of her scar. But since she was a student, I didn't really care and I just kept going for the sake of your learning and the sake of this video. So some collagen winding, uh, just spin that needle a little bit, wind the collagen. You can see a little bit of color change right where I just swiped my finger. Now you can see how much the winded collagen is moving the, uh, is moving the scar, which is pretty cool. Even though I didn't show it in this video, it pretty much goes without saying uh, our policy on uh, practicing under the standards of disease control and prevention, always using gloves, always using alcohol wipe down. So definitely before I stuck some needles in the sweet student, I performed an alcohol wipe down and you can see I'm using gloves, always important. Now we're gonna look at a large uh, knee scar. It is a uh, patellar tendon tear that they ended up repairing. Uh, this has been several years ago, I think it was in 2000, uh, maybe 2015 when this injury happened to my buddy there. So of course alcohol wipe down performed prior to us sticking some needles in him. So I'm using a uh, Myotech 2.0 and again I stick it in about a uh, 0.5 to 1 centimeter away from the scar and we're just gonna stick that guy in and just slide it directly underneath the scar. This actually had a pretty good bit of scar tissue built up underneath the scar so uh, it's a little bit harder to get the needle in in the certain areas. Uh, obviously that's a really big scar but I'm just for the purposes of this video I'm just going to kind of take care of the top part and uh, again with that scar tissue I kind of had to stabilize the skin before I put the uh, the rest of that needle in. So anytime I'm doing scar manipulation with a needle I like to just kind of vary my position of the needle to uh, kind of get on both sides of the scar which is what you're seeing here. Now that you got all your needles in, the fun can start. So we'll do some of the collagen winding. So we're just spinning the needle to wind the collagen around the needle. And then you can see doing a little bit of manipulation after we've got the, the collagen wound around that needle, you can see the scar kind of deforming and, and kind of making a little bit of an S out of the scar, uh, which is just a form of scar manipulation, except we're just doing it under the skin as opposed to on top of the skin. So here's just another example of uh, a little bit of scar manipulation with the needle. Now we're going to enter the pelvic floor world and talk about C-section scars a little bit. Uh, so many ladies have a C-section scar uh, that can develop all kind of issues. It can develop, you know, keloids, hypertrophic scarring. Uh, it can, you know, send pain into the abdominals. It can send pain into the pelvic floor. So just lots of issues can happen with a C-section scar. Of course, we're needling uh, kind of the top part of the mons pubis there. The technique is the same, however. So you have a scar and you just insert your needle about uh, 0.5 to 1 centimeter away from the scar and then you're going to slide the needle directly just underneath the scar. So 45 degrees or a little bit less and certainly in the abdominal section because I don't want to go too deep and, and risk getting into anything vital, uh, you know, such as the guts beneath the muscles, so to speak. Uh, so I'll tap this needle in, stay a little more superficial. I'm using a 15 millimeter ne needle here. It's a 2.0 Myotech, uh, but it is 15 millimeter needles in length. But so now I'm just doing a little collagen winding. Uh, and you can see how we're already starting to cause a little bit of change at the scar and a little bit of deformation there. So 
uh, just a little bit more collagen winding, uh, and then we'll do a little bit more manipulation. So that's pretty cool, but we can see, see a little change there. And we'll also do that on that last section there as well. Same technique as all your other scars, uh, it's just in a little bit different area. If you look close, you can actually see kind of just what my index finger is pointing to, but you can see the little uh, band of tissue underneath the scar that's kind of moving, moving up and down. Uh, it's just a little wound ball of collagen, I presume, just moving underneath the scar. Just kind of cool. So now we're going to talk about how you could practice this scar uh, management dry needling on yourself. By uh, Even if you don't have a scar, we're going to create a scar with not a pocket knife, with a black magic marker. So get your junk ready. That's your actual junk, the junk that you're going to use to dry needle. So find a dry erase marker, find some needles, find some alcohol wipes, find some gloves, because even though you're stabbing yourself, you don't want to give yourself something bad, like AIDS. Uh, so get that stuff ready, and then let's see how you can do this on yourself. So I went and put on my shorty shorts, so I don't have to roll my pants leg up too far. But uh, first thing you'll do is just draw a line on your leg somewhere or your arm, wherever you want to stab yourself with a needle. That can be your pretend scar. So just like I said before, practice within the standards of disease control and prevention. You should wear gloves. You should use alcohol. So we're going to use alcohol on each side of my imaginary scar there. So you've got your line drawn and you've already cleansed the skin with alcohol. So we'll start sticking these needles in. So we'll stick them about, uh, about a half a centimeter away from what our imaginary scar is. So we'll tap this guy in. Pretty superficial, so 45 degrees or, or less, and we're just gonna slide under that scar. I'm gonna put four in my imaginary scar here, just so I can show you what some uh, manipulation would look like. So about a half a centimeter away, and again, these do not have, these Myotech 2.0s do not have a tab. They don't have any glue. You just put the guide tube on the skin and send it. So pretty superficial, just sliding directly underneath my scar, my dry erase scar. So 0.5 away, good hard tap, slide that under, it's beautiful. So depending on the size of the scar, uh, depending on the sensitivity of the patient, you can use a uh, 15 or a 30 millimeter in length. I prefer to use a 30 millimeter just because I can have a little bit more needle to work with. And when I do my needle spinning, I can do a little better with tissue winding and collagen winding around that needle. So I'll show you what the spinning looks like in just a sec. Now the fun starts, where I'm probably gonna regret doing this. So I'm gonna do some needle spinning to create a little bit of collagen winding. So just spin those needles up, you will start to feel it. This is when the big handle of the myotech needle comes in very handy. Yep, instantly regretting this decision. So now that you've got your needles in and they're wound pretty tight with collagen, you can do some gentle manipulation. You can see how my uh, magic marker line or my dry erase marker line is moving a little bit. And then to your patient's tolerance, you can just do a little gentle scar manipulation. So we're getting some nice movement of the, of the line that we drew. So not terribly painful now that it's all in here and kind of mellowed out a little bit. Uh, got a little spicy there a couple of times, but this obviously isn't an actual scar, but if you had an actual scar that had, uh, you know, a lot of scar tissue underneath the skin, then your needle is going to bind a little faster and you can get a little more of a manipulation than what you're seeing with, with this dry erase marker. But this kind of gives you an idea that you can practice on yourself and at least you can feel uh, kind of what we're going for when we talk about a little bit of scar manipulation. So I know that was fun, stabbing yourself with your uh, pretend scar. Uh, and then doing your needle manipulation. And I definitely think it was good for you to practice that on yourself before you decided to do that on a patient. But I know you are wondering how long should you keep those needles in? Uh, should you do any yeast in with it? Uh, what can the patient tolerate? All that fun stuff. So if you look at the study by Rosenfeld and uh, their friends in 2020, they let them in for about 20 minutes. Uh, so I mean, that, that's certainly reasonable. Uh, personally, I, depending on the sensitivity of the patient, so I would uh, stick those needles in uh, and if they tolerate just the insertion of the needle just fine without yelling at me or screaming at me, then uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of the winding that I showed you. So I'm gonna do some collagen winding. If I can get the needle wound up nice and tight, then I'm gonna do some of my uh, scar manipulation from you know under the skin as opposed to on top of the skin. 
Uh, and if they tolerate that well, I'll do that for a little bit uh, until I, I see a, a change in the in the scar. I feel a change in the in the you know the texture of the scar or the elevation of the scar. Uh, however, if they're not tolerating that well, I don't want them to lay there biting the pillow wishing that this was over. So, uh, you know, I may just stick the needles under the scar and if that's all they can tolerate, then that's cool. That's all they can tolerate. If they're super sensitive, then I may hook them up to a little bit of e-stem, just some uh, very low intensity uh, e-stem just to create a little bit of the desensitization effect. Uh, and then, you know, hopefully they get to the point where they can tolerate a little bit more intensity and a little bit more manipulation and you can have more of an effect on the collagen underneath the scar. Uh, so it may start as simple as let me just stick these needles in and then pat the patient on the head and you know tell them they're going to be okay. And then uh, once I can tolerate more I may do a little of the spinning, may do some of the actual manipulation and if they can tolerate that on the first day then heck I'm going to do that on the first day and we may see a change in the scar on the first day. It's pretty cool. We, the last uh, class we had, our first class that we had uh, a couple weeks ago where we did this scar lab uh, we had a patient that had an arthroscopic procedure done on his shoulder and he had a, a little bit of a hypertrophic scar. It wasn't necessarily a keloid because it wasn't spread out outside of where his original scar was, but it was elevated. And I stuck two 15 millimeter needles in, one on each side, spun it, and did a little bit of uh, manipulation on it, and just not long at all. I mean, 20 seconds worth of manipulation. Pulled the needle out and the elevation of the raised part of the hypertrophic scar was, was completely flat. The patient, not the patient, the student, he reached back there and felt it and was like, I don't even feel that anymore. So, I mean, that's kind of some of the cool changes that you can have. We did that the first weekend. He came back the second weekend. It was still a little bit less. So, I mean, honestly, I was a little surprised that it was still a little bit less, but I thought that was really cool. So, uh, you know, patient tolerance is going to be the big driver here of how long uh, you need to leave the needles in, how many needles you can put in. If you have a, you know, a tw freaking 12 centimeter scar or something uh, that you would have to stick a ton of needles in like you saw in that picture, I'm not going to hammer the patient with that on the first day. So I may just stick a few in. Uh, spread them out and, and again, just do the manipulation to the patient tolerance. I appreciate y'all hanging out with me on the YouTube channel here for United Dry Needling. I appreciate y'all uh, liking this video. I appreciate you subscribing to the channel, telling your friends about us at United Dry Needling Education. I hope this uh, video about scar management and dry needling for scar management may give you a little bit of another tool in your tool belt because at the end of the day, that's all dry needling is. It's not magic. It's just another tool to assist you with some of your manual therapy techniques. Uh, so again, thanks for hanging out with us. Hope to see you in a course someday.